Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on the late one tonight at nine o'clock UK time, which is the fifth of the fifth. And I'm just, while I'm doing this, I'm just checking to make sure that we're live. And yes, we are live. Fantastic. We're live. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Silburn here. And I'm traveling all over the world. And as you know, the other day I was traveling in Jamaica and now I'm traveling all over into Canada with the multi-talented anchor, Mr. Stephen Okays. How are you doing, Mr. Okays? I am doing very well. Thank you for so much for having me. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, what you can do for me when you come on, if you just simply just uh, share this video, tell your friends there's something exciting is happening now, because guess what? It is not the Silburn show. It is the show of Mr. Stephen Case all the way from Canada, where we're going to have an update. As you can see, the reason why he's standing up is because at any minute now he's going to be called in. So therefore, he's got to be ready. Anything <laughs> breaking, breaking, breaking. Oh, am I right? Is that it? <laughs> oh, you've got it right. It's a very busy newsroom here on the Canadian landscape, for sure. <laughs> well, listen, Stefan, Stefan is, is someone I met uh, a few years ago. We haven't met in person, but we have been we have mutual um, friends, well, family friend and, uh, and, and his family. And uh, we have not met yet, but we have been um, following each other and supporting each other, which is something I believe is very crucial. We also share a Jamaican connection because of his uh, parentage. Uh, born in Canada. He's an award-winning news anchor in the capital of Canada. He isn't just your average journalist who sits behind a news desk. And as you can see, he is standing. <laughs> daily news. Aside from stellar reporting with Silas Flair, he worked diligently to give back up to the community volunteering for several not-for-profit groups with a focus on minority issues, youth, and the arts. Stefan, how are you doing? Good. So tell me, what... Why do they call you the multi-talented anchor? <laughs> I guess because I have such a uh, large variety of skill sets, if you will. I mean, I kind of fell into my journalism career. Yeah. I started off more with a theater background and doing some performing arts through acting and singing. I even almost moved to New York City after high school to attend the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, which is also the same uh, institution that Janelle Monet attended. Yeah. Um, but I decided to steer directions and go the journalism route for a myriad of reasons. Yes, yes. And and also the the, the Jamaican connections there, um, which, which I mentioned, what, what's a Jamaican connection um, over the seas there? Well, both my parents are Jamaican, uh, so I feel strongly linked to that heritage. I've been going to Jamaica since the tender age of 10 months old, and... I average going back almost every year. So I have a lot of family in Jamaica and St. Mary as well as in Clarendon. And so I definitely am very connected to my roots. And as you know, you know my cousin, Audie. Yes, Audie. Yes, <laughs> who lives yes, over yes. there in the UK. Yeah, no, that, that's good. And Audie's a good mate of mine as well, you know. But the other thing also, what I notice is that you also sing. Because right. I, was, I was, I think one time I was watching one of your videos where you, you sing as well. Mm -hmm. I, um, I kind of grew up singing. My mom always used to sing to me. She used to be a part of the Grace Baptist Church in, in St. Mary, so shout out to them. And yes. I kind of wanted to follow in her footsteps growing up, and then I'd start to join school choirs. And I really started to take my vocal performances more seriously at the age of 12 and started to really hone in and perfect that craft. Marrying that with my love for theater, I started going into the musical theater route and doing a lot of uh, plays and performances that way. These days, it almost seems easier to hone in on my vocal skills just because yes. I don't have a lot of time for live theater rehearsals. So at least when it comes to singing, I can just rehearse on my own and get prepared for a performance as they come. Yeah. OK. Um, I mean, one of the key reasons why I brought you on today is because I've been doing a, a series on um, what is happening around the world um, regarding COVID-19, you know, or coronavirus there. And uh, so I'm trying to get a, a flavor because somehow I've not heard Canada a lot in the news, even though I know it's in the news. Uh, but if you can give us a breakdown of what is it like in Canada, because as you heard, I don't know if you follow the news in the UK now, I believe it is near to 30,000. Uh, people right. have died, and I believe in the UK they said it's a number one. Um, well, 
it seems like everybody the news media you guys are trying to make it a big thing like everybody's trying to say well oh the uk got num the number one spot on the death list you know um i know the news sort of go for it but w what is it like in canada there we're probably flying under your radar because we're faring a little bit better than some of the countries in Europe, like Italy and Spain, which are now doing a little bit better right now. The yeah. UK is a little bit at the forefront, as you mentioned, and we're certainly doing much better than the, you know, the American epicenter like New York City. Yes. So when it comes to the Canadian way of dealing with the pandemic, if you're familiar with Canada, we have a large geography. So we have a lot of land but not the most densely populated country out there. So we're not, uh, you know, for example, the nation's capital, we have about a million people, but it's spread out. So in terms of being in close proximity to one another at all times, I feel as though maybe we weren't hit as hard with the coronavirus because we aren't in that close proximity. We have a lot of space and people live far apart uh, outside of the urban centers, if you will. So our numbers in terms of a Canadian population for the entire country of Canada, and again, we do have more land than the United States of America, yeah. there are 33 million people here, right? The American population is about 10 times that amount. Yeah. So certainly their numbers are going to spike and look much greater. So when we talk ratios, we, you know, we talk about Ontario and Quebec, those are the two largest provinces in the country that probably had the highest numbers for yeah. Canada. But in retrospect, relatively speaking to some of the other countries, where it looks like we're doing quite well. Yes. You know, we tackled it head on right away in terms of what the government's standpoint was. As soon as we realized that it was arriving here and it had landed in Canada, COVID-19, this pandemic that we thought was overseas at first, yes. um, pretty much we went on lockdown. So this whole idea of physical distancing closing down retail stores, closing down schools, only making sure that it's essential services and essential people going to work. That was how we tackled it right away. And it appears to be working. So it looks as though, you know, all the medical officials talk about flattening that curve. curve yes. I think we have peaked and we're kind of in this flattening state. We're just looking towards coming back down on the other side. Oh, wow. That, that's true. And, and what is, um, like, for argument's sake, the whole Jamaican connection? Because in the UK now, well, Jamaica, between the UK and Jamaica, mm -hmm. the UK is now spearhead on the 7th of May for people to fly back to the UK by paying £360 pounds or so. Because as, as a result of the whole um, virus, um, many people are on lockdown. Planes are down. I mean, today... If you have heard the news already, Virgin is is coming out of um, Gatwick, so therefore airlines are being shut down now. What what is Canada doing in any repatriation of uh, people like Jamaicans or so people Canadians in Jamaica going back to Canada? Certainly. So we uh, we started dealing with repatriation flights in about March. So our federal government, our prime minister came out and said, you know what, get home on your own if you can. There's about yes. this two week window to work with. Unfortunately, we still had Canadians stuck abroad, certainly in Jamaica, but also in places like India, um, some of the more hot spots, destinations for vacationers, because Canadians love to travel. So yes. certainly in Mexico, we're talking about people being stuck in Honduras, Canadians just all over the world. Yes. And so as the airlines started to shut down, it became really tricky in terms of allowing other countries to get us into their airspace, if you will, right? There's yes. a lot of negotiations that need to take place. Even when it came to Canadians stuck in China at the jump, we had to wait for the go ahead and the green light because their airspace was locked down. It wasn't that we didn't want to go and get our citizens. It was the fact that we had to negotiate and, and play that game of diplomacy to make sure that we could actually go get them. So I think March was definitely, a, certainly the latter half of March, the last two weeks of March was when our airlines were doing a bunch of repatriation trips. Um, going to these destinations and picking up Canadian citizens. Yes. Some of our airlines were even flying to destinations that they don't typically fly to. So yes. it really was these rescue missions in terms of getting Canadians back home. 
I've heard that if you go through our Canadian embassy in Jamaica currently, then you kind of get on this list and you'll get a call letting you know when it's time to head to the airport. But essentially, our Jamaicans that are there just have to have their bags packed and ready to go at any moment, right? So you may get 24 hours notice, you may get 48 hours notice, you just have to be ready to go once you get that call. Right, right. Well, Kathy Olofosia, she said, hi, Stefan. And hi. Uh, she also said hi to me as well. So what can I say? Uh, well, that's fantastic. And, and, and while at the same time, what's the sort of mood like now? I mean, the, the UK is looking at ways to unlock the lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, New Zealand has completely zero. I saw the prime minister was saying zero. She said we got a positive one, but she said actually it was already counted before. So it's zero. Uh, Italy, I believe we're Spain. People are coming out and starting to hug each other. What is it like in Canada now? So because we are so big and there are different governments at play. There's Sorry, are, you, are, you, are you trying to say because it's so big, everybody can grab an island for themselves or a big spot? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying because it's so big, it complicates the matter in terms of the various provinces doing their own thing, right? So there's messaging at the federal level, but each individual province is taking their own measures to reopen. But yeah. in terms of assessing the mood of Canadians, if you will, I think that we are in a state of being anxious, yeah. right? People have been locked down for close to two months now. Yes. It doesn't look as though the numbers are as high as what was anticipated. Yeah. So in terms of whether or not they feel as though staying in a lockdown state is warranted, there are many people out there that don't feel that it's warranted. Yes mostly because they're losing money, yes. right? So businesses can't operate. Small businesses are looking for relief at this point in time. Our federal government has announced several different forms of bailing people out or some benefit packages and some stimulus yes. to try and keep the economy afloat. But we know that Canada is currently in a recession and it takes mm -hmm. quite a bit of time to bounce back from a recession. And so people just want to get back to work. They want to get back to their normal lives and make sure that they can survive this economically because it so far it looks like the majority of us have survived it medically speaking. Do, do you think, do you think, um, Stefan, that people are reaching to a point where they are saying, listen, we've got to get back to not well. Normal is a very is a subjective term and very relative because many people don't want to get back into normal, but they just want to get on with their life. It's like this is just going on, and people are now getting a bit slightly restless because sorry because I notice in the UK of late more cars on the road, and we haven't changed the whole lockdown procedure. But it's like people are actually unlocking themselves at the same time. Do you, do you see that sort of happening? That, that sort of mentality coming through. That's certainly playing out here as well. I think, you know, Canada, we deal with four seasons. Some of us in the nation's capital say we truly only deal with two, winter and summer. Yes. Winter is behind us now. When we were first locking down, it was easy to keep people inside because it was cold outside. Yes. Now we're seeing sunnier days. The snow has melted. People want to have their barbecues. It's more comfortable to be outside and go for walks and runs and get those that vitamin D that we long for so much during the winter months. And so even our premier here in the province of Ontario has said, listen, I'm not quite ready to ease restrictions the way that you want me to, but I also acknowledge that it will be way more difficult to keep people inside at this point in time with the warmer weather. I mean, it's very tempting to just go out and engage. And even if you're trying to keep that physical distance, the more people we see on the streets, the harder that becomes, right? Yeah. We lock down our parks so that you can only walk through and not loiter or play. Um, but that's going to be a harder argument. Again, as I mentioned before, especially with the numbers starting to flatten or go down, if you will. Yeah. And one more point before I move on from this subject is mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the UK on the front line, the, the, the majority of persons who passed away on COVID related or COVID directly um, were people from the black and minority ethnic. In America, we are seeing whereby a lot of people who are dying from COVID are people from the black and minority ethnic. 
Are we seeing that similarity in Canada as well? I cannot say that concretely, only because yeah. we are not tracking it the same way. Right. Okay. <clears throat> From a socioeconomic standpoint, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, in our province here, we have announced a few personal support workers who are yeah. on the front lines in the healthcare field and in these long-term care homes who have passed away. To my knowledge, all of them have been visible minorities. Yes. And that just goes hand in hand with the type of work that um, some newcomers to Canada have been inclined to do. Yeah. So there are a lot of personal support workers. There are a lot of registered practical nurses. There are a lot of people from these this that part of the demographic that works inside of these care homes and inside yeah. of these hospitals. So they are more exposed and vulnerable. What we're seeing in the United States is not surprising to me because yeah. there's a certain type of work that Americans with a more Eurocentric background or Caucasian, if you will, don't feel inclined to do. Yeah. So when you're an immigrant looking for that American dream and you're told that this is the work that's available to you and you kind of get stuck into this vicious cycle of, you know, working at a grocery store or working at a fast food chain restaurant, or even if you want to elevate your status and yeah. do a little bit of education, sometimes what's readily available is being on the front lines in the healthcare field, but not necessarily as a doctor. Mm. Because even if you have that education from your home country, they're going to put you through the ringer to go through it all over again. Yes. So there aren't a lot of people that are doctors per se, but they are still there on the front lines, even in custodial work or doing housekeeping. Yes. So they are vulnerable and they are exposed. And I think that is that is a central ethos and uh, of the whole thing. And that is why the government here is appointed. Uh, well, they're looking at ways how they can understand what is really happening in regards to why black and minority ethnic is affected. But I want to move away from this with a short time that we have and to talk about one of the things that I, I've been trying to do, I've been doing, not trying to do, been doing, mm -hmm. is to at this time to look at some key tips or so that can inspire and empower people at the time. Because as you recognize, people are actually at home. Um, they can't go anywhere. Uh, they are locked down. Um, even, even if they're working, myself is working, being at court every day, most days, but I'm still just sitting on my laptop in the office yes. at home. And the judges call you. But people are at home. Now, I want people to be inspired. People are actually revising their dreams, revising their visions, contemplating what is it that I want to do. If someone said they want to be an anchor and a multi-talented person <laughs> that does a Zulu and the pose, which I'll show the people a bit later. <laughs> uh, what, what is it? What, what, what would you say are some of the key tips um, at this time? Because it is very important to see persons like yourself um, on the front line leading the way in the media. Uh, you got Don Lemon and all these different persons. I mean, what, is it, what are some of the key tips that would you give, um, Stefan? I think the biggest thing is to recognize that you do have time, right? Yes. Our lives were so busy prior to this pandemic yes. and yes. having to be on lockdown. We were so preoccupied with mm. consumerism. I think that if there's any sort of blessing in disguise and the trauma of all of what's taking place around the world is the fact that we have so much time for one another and so much time for ourselves currently. So don't let that time go to waste and feel bored. I think it's time to get introspective. Yes. Look at yourself, reflect on your life, reconnect with your family and your loved ones. I think Families are spending so much more time together and learning so much more about one another as, yes. they, as they weather the storm as a unit, that it is now time to, you know, write down that vision and make it plain. What do you want to do? Mm. And while we're, while we're on lockdown, come up with a strategy to make it happen. If it's to start a business, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to think about doing it and how you're going to do it. If it's, you know changing your career path, you have no distractions currently that is sucking up all of that time that you have 
to consider it and to research it, yeah. right? Knowledge is at our fingertips right now. We don't actually truly have to leave our homes. Google is my favorite search engine. Yes. And I don't even know how people functioned prior to the internet <laughs> at this point. So just take advantage of that and recognize that the time that we have currently is not to be wasted. I, I like what you said there about um, creating and starting new things, starting new opportunities as well. The rat race, which was happening, uh, people are actually saying, oh, the air. I mean, the air is so clean. Um, it is like, can you find anything good out of this time? And I think that's one of the big questions. Can you find anything good out of this time when people are dying? And it's sometimes hard to say that you're finding some things good out of this time because you don't want to sort of feel as if you are not aware or considering the fact that many people are suffering. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Do you think that people can say, actually, I'm finding some good, I'm, I'm actually seeing some benefits of this time. Do you think it's, it's difficult to say that? I think it's healthy to say that, mm. right? It's not to downplay the impact of the pandemic. Yeah. It's not to downplay the casualties of coronavirus, but it's more, it's a healthy approach to balance out the conversation. Mm. I'm in the news media. I don't get a chance to turn this off. Yes. Right? But I do recommend people keep themselves informed in doses, yes. right? There are journalists that are working on society's behalf and consuming all of it all of it from around the world. I consume it locally, I consume it nationally, I consume it internationally. And I'm doing that 60 plus hours per week. So stay informed and know what you need to know, but I don't think that you should feel guilty about finding some positive in it. And I think it would be virtuous to do so because then that helps to create this balance because this, quite frankly, is a depressing time. And yeah. the next pandemic to hit internationally will be people's mental health, especially those who may be isolating alone. Yes, that, that's key. That's key what you mentioned about the mental health factor. So therefore, and I'll ask you this question because the other day I was with a couple of doctors and we're looking at what is your, what is our people coping mechanism at this time? Because Either way, people are isolating in some respect. Even if they are with their families, they're still isolated. They are somewhat in this quarantine, they're in this lockdown. I said my, my coping mechanism was eating cakes. <laughs> 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 and I put the videos, you know. And some people say their coping mechanism was um, sleeping or um, doing gardening. What do you think, what do you say is your coping mechanism uh, what, what, that you'd encourage people on at this time, you know? For Canadians in particular, I think fresh air is key. Fresh air. Most definitely. I, you know, we don't want to crowd the streets and be outdoors, but certainly going through the winter months, the day's time is short. Our days are short. It's cold. It's dark. And a lot of people go through the winter blues regardless. So now that we have a little bit of better weather and the seasons are changing, I think getting outside, getting that dose of vitamin D into your system and getting some fresh air is is key right now. And you did mention about the smog and the air quality. Yes. I mean, there's such a stillness mm. in the nation's capital here in Canada. And I think we need to embrace that stillness because it's peaceful. And so if we are to consume that and take it at face value, mm. as opposed to something that is a bad thing, I think we can certainly benefit from it. And you know what is interesting because companies are now looking at ways how they are going to um, phase back into the offices. And what I'm picking up, even through my circles as well, is that people are actually saying we should actually capitalize on what we have learned in this in this lockdown, whereby if someone wants to work from home, let them work from home because we have seen that it happens. And it does work. It gives a quality of lifestyle. Yes. You know, even though I believe at the same time, you work harder because I know when I'm leaving court after a hear after a hearing, it takes me about an hour or so to get back home and rest. But now, after something is finished, you're you're not going anywhere, you're not traveling. So you end up sometimes working a bit harder. 
Mm. Yeah. So I, I think it's a, uh, it's going to be <clears throat> not going back to the norm, but going back to another norm, if anything like that. That's what I want actually visualizing the next phase after this pandemic has been unlocked. For sure. No, there's a, there will be a new normal. Yeah. Where I don't think we're just going to revert back to the way things used to be. But in terms of that new normal, I think we also need to recognize that it's what keeps us healthy. Yes. And if there's anything that I'm looking forward to is the fact that people will be aware of hand washing mm. or self hygiene and the need to make sure that if you are sick to not be around others, right? Because the way you cope with your illness may be a life and death situation for someone else. Yes. In terms of having a compromised immune system. So if you're sick, stay home from work. If you're sick, don't be at the grocery store, yes. right? We are faced with a new normal in terms of how we even interact with each other or how we shop. Yes. You know, keeping our distance from one another in the checkout line or being okay with having our temperature checked before even being given access to a grocery store. We're seeing that start to take place as well. Can I ask you a question? Um, do you know Barbara Keys? Uh, that would be my mother. Well, she says hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Miss Keys. <laughs> hi, Mom. I, you know, is, is, is still free to talk about anything now still, yes? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know what I'm like. Um, listen, one of the things you mentioned about is uh, minority issues that you also focus on are as so, and it is, it, is, it is one of the things, and I'm doing a parallel thing with the UK here, um, whereby there is this struggle and there is the, the issues whereby there's a sense of um, lack of progress in the sense with, with black persons. Um, let's call it a spade a spade. And you deal with minority issues. What, what, what are some of the challenges that you have in Canada? And what are some of the lessons that you've learned that persons can take um, from you as well, from some experience in Canada? Some of the challenges that I say that I've experienced or what I've observed from the Canadian experience is just how subtle racism can be. Yes. Can Canadians are polite. Um, I think in certain parts of the country, we're also very good at being politically correct. Yes. So in that regard, sometimes it is hard to call out the racism or the prejudice that you're facing for what it is. I think there's a fragility around speaking the truth around racism mm -hmm. in terms of how it's being accepted by others who you may be holding accountable to that racism or that discrimination. Yes. Whereas south of the border in certain areas, it's way more explicit. It truly is white and black, <laughs> right? It's yeah. that clear cut. Um, in Canada, it's not. And I think we have a problem here of systemic racism, where the people carrying it out don't even recognize they're doing it. And I don't think that they are horrible people, per se, or that that is their intent. However, they are drawn to likeness. Yes. And so by likeness, I mean like-minded people, people that look like them, people that they can see themselves perhaps being friends with or even family with. And so mm -hmm. as people align their relationships in that regard, it doesn't do um, any good service to those who don't fall into that bracket. Yes. So when it even comes to the hiring experience, if you can hire someone or there are two people with the same skill set, and then you're looking at hiring someone, you might be more inclined to hire someone who sounds like you, looks like you, and you can see yourself hanging out with on the weekend outside of work time. Yes. As opposed to, you know, giving this opportunity to another who truly may even need it more based on the lack of privilege they've been afforded up until this point. Yes. And I think, you know, when it comes to Canada as well, we pride ourselves on being such a bilingual nation based on historical factors in our relationship with France and Britain, that yes. it sometimes eliminates some of the newcomers. If you want to work for the federal government, it's almost mandated that you speak both official languages. 
Well, if you come from Jamaica, for example, and if you're coming at a certain age, if you're coming in your 30s and have all the education in the world, how do you not, you don't get access to being a public servant or working at the federal level because you're automatically eliminated because you're colonized by the Brits and don't have any relationship with France or can't speak that language. Yes, so yes. there are some misfortunes in terms of how our society is structured. So, so therefore, one can one can simply say then that a lot of it also has to do with one attitude, mm -hmm. how, how to navigate through the maze. Because the question I'll ask is that there you are as an anchor at the same time. Was it any difference about you? Or is it an attitude that one navigates through the maze of the various objections or oppositions? I think once you've made up your mind. Yes, I like that. And you approach your life with such conviction. Yes. People do not have a choice but to accept it, right? And so I think perseverance is key. Yes. So if I were to offer anyone that advice, it would be perseverance, right? Yes. I don't, I believe that I steer my own ship. <laughs> I am the captain of my own ship. Yes. So no one is going to tell me where I fall or put limits on what I can do. And they may try. And you even, even though you even look like a Zoolander there, I don't know what's up <laughs> there. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the model pose. That's years of acting and taking you know, headshots. <laughs> <laughs> but keep talking about the perseverance there, uh, the whole attitude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to approach life with perseverance and, and really take control because I've had friends. I grew up in, in a low income community. Yes. And so, based on how we break down our school system, pretty much everyone in a low income community goes to the same school. So, you kind of get branded or painted with the same brush. Yes. I've had friends that said guidance counselors have told them, well, you know, your dreams are too big and you can only go so far or maybe try college, not university. That shouldn't be the case because these are the messages that are being, you know, sown into the lives of children as opposed to telling them to go for their dreams or shoot for the stars. Yes. Um, and so you really have to make up in your own mind because there are people who are supposed to be offering you guidance or there are people who are your elders that are t putting limits on your own dreams. And so you can't listen to that. You have to persevere and, you know, filter out all of that noise because if you have faith and not to get too spiritual here, but if you have been shown something or if you've been promised something about your own life, who is anyone else to dictate otherwise? You know, what you said is so powerful because I was listening by chance on Instagram with Tyrese and Tyrese mm -hmm. was talking about, you got to even be careful about mentors because mentors sometimes don't want to pass them. Uh, you know, and, and he was saying at a point that uh, a person who mentors you should be happy when you surpass them. That means they've done a good job. Yes. You know, and, and so so what you're talking about is that I, I believe sometimes, Stephen, that you've got to sometimes people have got to be motivated from within without anything external except maybe God. You know, you've got to have that, that built-in thing. I consider myself a super positive person. I mean, it's everything. You know what I mean? I don't care. One hoot. And if I'm and if I'm telling off someone, I'll just say to them in my Jamaican term, hop off I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a Jamaican will laugh and say, Oh, that's too posh. You know what I mean? I say, hop yes. off. It, it is not saying that you're rude, but I think you've got to be very brutal when you come to the point when you have identified who you are and yes. you have that sense of identity. Uh what do you say about that whole identity factor? That, that plays a key factor, your, your own USP, your own blueprint. For sure. I think knowing who you are and being confident in who you are is essential, quintessential to going through life and navigating all of the tumultuous waters that come with and yeah. any tsunamis that may come your way. I think that, you know, we both have a Jamaican background. Yes. I'm fairly blunt. But that's because I don't like confusion. I like things clear cut. And so, you know, some of my colleagues will call me out on being blunt or t 
tone, but I, but then I asked them and I challenged them as like, but did you understand what I meant? Yes. Because this Canadians have a tendency to be fairly passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so they drop hints for one another and then they get upset when people don't pick up on the hints that they're dropping. But I mean, no one should be offended because in certain environments and certain atmospheres, it's not personal. Some mm -hmm. things are just professional and some things are really to the betterment of the other person. And so we need to remove hurt feelings and remove this idea of being so sensitive and overly emotional about things when sometimes, you know, I have people that I'm mentoring currently in the industry. And if I am brutally honest with them, it is only to make them better. It is yeah. not an attack on who they are. And I think that sometimes it stings at the jump, yeah. but I also believe that is why I have strong and solid relationships with the people that I do because they trust what I'm saying yeah. is truth. And so if they do earn that compliment, I mean it wholeheartedly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard from Mr. Stephen Case and uh, Stephen hails from Canada with Jamaican background and uh, is an award-winning news anchor in the capital of Canada, multi-talented. Uh, what was what did I say yesterday? You're you're the manipulative one. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you misspoke. You misspoke. So I misspoke. <laughs> but but you know, at the end of the day, listen. I have a show which I call "Don't Go with the Flow." It's like a five minute, a one minute um, perspective on things. Like I change things. Like uh, people say the sky is the limit, but what I've done, I've changed it to say the sky is the start. I mean to say instead of waiting to say it's a limit, I say it's a start. I, I, I have another quote which I created, which is, don't go with the flow or you'll be in someone else's stream. So instead, create your own rivers. Right. So I, I, I use the word manipulative, and I'm going to try to make up something in, in one in one minute with manipulative or 30 seconds. And it say to be manipulative is to manipulate yourself into what you want to be. Yes. <laughs> because No, that's fair. I mean, I tell my friends... Who know that I can speak Jamaican dialect? They're like, it's funny watching you on the news because it yeah, feels like you're another person. And I explain to them, I am not a different person, but I am a chameleon. Yes, and that means I can communicate with a lot of different people and relate to a lot of people and have them relate to me. Yes, yes, yes. No. So in that in that vein, I will accept the word manipulative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, when I when I said the word one time. Um, the sky's a start. Someone said, that's a bit arrogant, isn't it? To say you're starting from the start. I said, listen, why are you guys starting from the bottom and say, I'm starting yeah, from there yeah, because, yes. because I've already reached, man. And I'm just going to the uttermost part. Keep reaching. Bit. Keep pushing. And I, I like yes. that bit. And how would you, how would you then um, use that word, keep pushing, to push persons? What what would you motivate um person? I, I like this now. We're doing some good bouncing off each other with some words. Pushing. Let's use that one to motivate someone. I mean, my favorite is perseverance. Yes. Right. So for me, that is, that is the embodiment of pushing through. Yes. Regardless of the anything that's coming your way, pushing back, you persevere and you keep pushing through. Yes. And I've had to do that pretty much my entire life. Right. And so if you let obstacles stand in your way or if you throw yourself a pity party or if you're yes. feeling too sorry for yourself based on your circumstances, because you know you come from a single parent household or because you don't have enough money or you feel like people aren't giving you a chance in employment yes you you're, you're starting to allow those external forces to push you back as opposed to you pushing forward and persevering and mm -hmm. that is necessary to survive life yes yes going through no matter what using mm -hmm. the when I used to do some street preaching, sometimes we say we use the opposition factors and, you, and, and use it as a platform, stand upon it and preach. Yes. <laughs> you know, well, Stephen, listen, um, it, it's good having you on. And, uh, and that was really great as we continue here just briefly. Now, what would you say are maybe your, uh, your key tips for persons listening here in the UK? Well, it's not just the UK, it's Canada. And, and of course, this will go around. What do you say are maybe three or a couple of tips that you'd give at this time to motivate persons? Because I like you. you, you I mean, since all the introduced with you, I, I like the, 
let's say you surround yourself with people that inspire you and motivate you as much as possible. And I believe that is very crucial. And I'm very peculiar about the persons that surround me. I'm very peculiar about the videos that I get. I, I, I tell people literally these days, stop sending me videos because I'm able to research myself, just as we did before we had Google. Yes. And I'm very brutal with that, because at the end of the day, I'm protecting my eye gate, you know? And, and, and that is something. So what would you say are some of the key tips that you would leave for persons at this time? I would say, you know, as much as I acknowledge this is a time to reflect on self and yeah. self-betterment, the one thing that I always want to remind people is to keep checking on each other yes. as well. During this time of isolation and being alone and with one's thoughts, um, we need to remind each other that we're there for each other, that we love one another. And so fellowship is key. I mean, friendship is essential to the soul. We were not made to go through life solo, yeah. <laughs> right? So. I think that as we are all dealing with this pandemic and we will all cope differently and you may be taking the time to be like, what's next for me or how am I going to survive this? Or, you know, maybe it's time to switch careers or start a business or what have you. Or if you're focused on, you know, uh, a relative that may be ill, it's also really important to check on your circle and make sure that once these restrictions are lifted, and we can reconnect with each other, yes. that those people that you want to reconnect with feel as though you were there for them during this time when it was time. critical for so many people. It's important to be neighborly. It's important to remind people, you know, if you need someone to talk to, hopefully you're comfortable enough to come and talk to me with how you're feeling or the thoughts going through your head. Because I am very concerned about the next pandemic being mental health issues. Wow, wow. Okay, and in Jamaica, what's your favorite place? What is my favorite place? Your favorite place in Jamaica? Araka Bessa St. Mary. Respect, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> He's an Ochi man. I'm straight out of Ochi, and I'm in Ochi. You're from Ochi? Okay, yes, I spent a lot of time in Ochi town. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, did you get permission? <laughs> I hope you got permission. I, I told my sister. Of course. To, yeah. I'm a card holding resident. Okay, fantastic. And and <laughs> finally, what's, your, what's your favorite Jamaican food? Oxtail. Huh? Oxtail without question. Oxtail, no question. Okay, finally, before we go, I need you to explain this. That requires no explanation. You tell me your thoughts on that image. My thoughts on that image. I, I don't know. That looked like a Zoolander pose or something like that. I get accused of that a lot. I don't know what to tell you. It's just in my nature. Is it? Okay. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, um, I think I've got something that can rival you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Yeah, because I was looking through the other day and I realized that I did have a, a Zoolander pose, but I was joined by um, some previous guests who was on my show. And... And maybe it is maybe it is for some stroke of luck while you're not while while you're not getting it. But yes, I found it now, and uh, and here it is, and we can see which one. Um, one second there, let me get it. Let me get it. Don't let me down now. This is a moment of truth. This is a this is a key moment. Ah, I see, I see. Yes, that, that, that certainly rivals mine, for sure. Yes, solid <laughs> there it is. competition right there. There it is. There it is, the Zoolander pose or something like that, you know? Um, <laughs> I focus, I personally focus more on the intensity in the eyes than the person is, but I see what you guys are going for there. <laughs> so, listen, Stefan, listen, it was great having you tonight, and um, thank you for coming out and uh, sharing your, your time in the moment with, with us here in the UK and, of course, your, your friend. And thank you to your mother for allowing this opportunity because if it wasn't for her and your father, it wouldn't have happened in the first place. So thank you, Mrs. Keith. Nice. <laughs> All right, any last word or that's it? I just want to thank you so much for having me. I really appreciated this time to chat and, and you know share my perspective on things and look forward to maybe doing it again down the road in the future. Oh, yes, definitely. And um, see you in Canada or in the UK. Actually, you came to the UK. We didn't get to meet, did we? What was it? Yeah, I've been to the UK several times. But, you yeah. know, next time we'll make it happen. Definitely. Okay. 
All the best and have a good night and all the best at work and stay Thank safe, you. Stephen. All the best. Cheers. Today. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for for that, and uh, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Let me hear your thoughts, let me hear your views, because I believe it's very important to to bring in uh, persons from the world world and to showcase our people. I, I believe in that, which I always say: showcase the splendid nature of our people, display the splendor. And of course, it doesn't stop there, because on Friday I'll have Jen and Jay from Hustle and Heal, so dynamic lady, who is going to come on the show. And that is going to be very awesome. And next week, I'm going to have Sal Winter from Root to Tips, who does ladies' hair. As you can see, I, I won't benefit from that because I have no hair because of she does natural hair. So next week, um, I think it's Friday or Wednesday, she should come on. And on Thursday, I'll be having uh, representatives from Victoria Mutual Building Society talking about remittance and how that is affected and how people can do that during this time of COVID. And also as well, um, the, the one of the other managers, and we'll have a discussion as to how people can um, send money to Jamaica, but not just send Jamaica, how they can build their finances as well. So I'm keeping it wide round for all different areas and um, very interesting guest will be coming on. And if you know of certain one who is interested, someone dynamic, I'm not looking for superstars because everybody's a superstar, but persons of a story and very um, also very intriguing, okay? So thank you very much, and thank you so much to uh, Mr. Stefano Case from Canada, and thank you for everyone who joined, and please share this video. And remember, this will be on YouTube as well, and remember to like and subscribe, and uh, like and subscribe, and, uh, and, and, and you know, on the YouTube channel, which is Silver TV. So thank you, Zion Love. Thanks for the interview. Very informative and balanced. When is Clary, Chapel West. Adrian, yes, you need to be tenacious. Thank you for those who came on, Kathy pushing their own fears on you. We won't let that. 100% agree that comment. You are the captain of your own ship. Their only limit is you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the support and all the best and have a good night. Basically, bye-bye.